Uh, number five was the Lego movie. Uh, this was quite funny when uh, me and my dad went to see it. Uh, me, a 17-year-old teenager, and my dad, a 50-year-old man. Um, we went to see it on a Saturday matinee screening, So, and we went and sat down on the front row as being the only people... Uh, like So you have all these younger children gathering around um, and it's just me and dad sitting there getting ready to watch it um, which is also similar to when I went to see Frozen because uh, me and my girlfriend and everyone else who's about five years old or parents uh, it's quite funny when you go and see a film like that with no children <laughs> number four was a film which I actually saw last Monday uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and I loved Rise I thought Rise of the Planet of the Apes was really really great um, and then Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I, I wasn't sure when I was watching the trailers. It's like they killed James Franco's character off and all of that. And I wasn't sure how good it was going to be. Um, and then I went and watched it, and I thought, wow, this is actually like, it's possibly the best blockbuster we've had since Inception. Uh, I honestly can't think of a better blockbuster that we've had. We haven't, you know been that lucky with blockbusters I mean obviously I haven't seen Godzilla or anything but um the Lego not the Lego movie I've got it written down there and that was the first one I saw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes was truly truly great um I really really enjoyed watching it uh there's really not much more I can say like it really blew my mind just how good and the CGI on it like when you see the apes up in the trees or getting rained on on buildings and stuff and you see the the individual hairs on the apes um that are just getting blown uh across and you just the attention to detail in the film is just utterly incredible andy circus yet again absolutely captures the motion capture i don't think andy circus should you know win an oscar i don't i don't think that that should be the case but he deserves some sort of recognition in the uh award ceremony there's got to you know something because as caesar he it's just amazing what he does as caesar and uh, the facial expression and the pure emotion that he puts into it. you don't expect from a blockbuster and it's a, den it's a genuinely intelligent blockbuster uh just like inception was and it proves that our industry can do it so let directors like that do what they do let christopher nolan i, I can't even remember who it is that directs donald Page, which is really bad um but, you know, give directors like that the chance to make these blockbusters rather than handing them over to people like Michael Bay. who I, There's a reason I didn't even put Transformers 4 on our mentions. That's all I have to say on that. Uh, number three is a very, it's a very small film and it's really, uh, it's really well made and really uniquely made. It's called Lock. Uh, it stars Tom Hardy. It's got uh, the guy that played Moriarty in Sherlock uh, and Olivia Coleman. Um, who you may have seen in Broadchurch and whatnot, um, but Tom Hardy is the only person that's ever on screen. You see no one else on screen. You don't even see their faces. It's what it's about. This is about a man. He's a he's a construction worker, and he's having to drive down the. I think it's the M6. It might be the M1. But he's just driving down the motorway. It's an hour and a half journey because he's got to get to some place. I'm not saying anything because I don't want to give away too many spoilers. I don't want to ruin any surprises which are coming your way. Um, and he plays... And so what it is, is it's him sitting in the car. It's all filmed in real time. It's an hour and a half journey. It's an hour and a half film. And he's sitting there and he's taking phone calls from different people. He's having to manage his career. He's having to manage his family. And then there'll be moments where he has to talk to it, where he's thinks so his father's in the back and so he talks to his father and it's just it is utterly incredible you know tom hardy if he doesn't get nominated for an oscar it's a crime to our film industry because it it's him for an hour and a half solid and he completely holds it he's just driving down the m6 and it's literally just the emotion in his voice that he's got to uh portray anything and he does it utterly brilliantly it's a real really really gripping it doesn't sound it but it is uh number two is Blue Ruin. Uh, this is another one of those sort of self-contained thrillers. Um, and it reminded me a lot of No Country Forum. And so much that a day after I had to get my No, no Country Forum DVD out and uh, re-watch it. Because it just made me remember how good No Country Forum was. Blue Ruin was utterly brilliant. Uh, it's about 
I I have to be really careful. It's basically about a man and he he's like he's like living on the he's living on the roof. He's a hobo and whatever homeless person. Um, and what he does is he someone is released from prison who has wronged him in the past, and uh, he seeks revenge on that person. And the events spiral out of control, like they do in No Good Roman, how he takes the money and that and then a series of violent attacks happen across America and all of that. It's very similar in that sense, you know, and it, it's about it escalating from that moment. He's trying to protect the people that he loves, uh, as well as getting his revenge and ending it all. He just he just wants it to get, to end and whatever. Uh, and Blue Ruin is truly great. If you get a chance to see Blue Ruin, do. And number one, it will come as no surprise to anyone which has been subscribed to my channel over the past three months, is The Raid 2. That film is utterly brilliant. You can go and watch my 15 minute review if you want to hear what I really have to say about it. It, I'm, I got it for my birthday. It's coming out in 10 days. So I will be re-watching that. I actually have the first one over here because I re-watched that recently. Uh, the first Raid film. Um, which, and it's really... There's not a lot more I can say about the Raid 2. Just go and see it because it's two and a half hours which is just this really, really intelligent film. The first one had a huge focus on action. It was all about the action set pieces and everything. But then the second one develops into this really intelligent thriller where it's, is Rama becoming a criminal or is he staying on the right side of the law or what? what's going on? Because, you know, and I don't think that, like, later films this year really have to push the boundaries of what's of that in order to top my list because The Raid 2 is utterly brilliant. Now for the films which I'm looking forward to. I expect that this is going to be quite a long film talk, to be honest. Um, but I apologise for that. I hope you guys don't mind. You can obviously skim watch it if you want. Uh, first film which I'm looking forward to, which comes out... Well, I'm looking forward to The Inbetweeners 2, but I wasn't going to talk about that. Because that comes out literally tomorrow or today, depending on when I get this uploaded. Uh, so I need to go and see The Inbetweeners 2. But it's not one which I've really been going, yes, and... Yeah, you know, I have to see that, uh, and whatever. But first film is Sin City 2. Now, the first Sin City uh, I got for Christmas a couple of years ago. I hadn't seen it before. And uh, I also got the comic, the first comic in the series as well. And I absolutely loved it. You know, the, the art style, the whole feeling of it and everything. And then uh, I heard about Sin City 2. And that uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was going to be one of the stars. And he's... Possibly, in my opinion, he's one of the greatest actors in our generation. He, I can't think of a bad film that I've seen him in. I think he's a really, really great actor. Uh, I always enjoy him when he's on screen. And um, I, from the look of the trailers, because the thing with the first in the city, it was three separate stories which you'd occasionally see interweave, but they weren't really think uh, like as one. Sin City Two seems to be one of those where. All the stories, they seem to be happening at the same time, whereas Sin City 1, it was one story and another story. And they all seem to be happening at the same time, and then they all cross paths. And it, and so that means that Joe Gordon-Levitt and everyone, they're all going to be on screen for a long time. I'm interested to see, because some of the characters in it, uh, stuff happened to them in the first one. And so I'm wondering, you know, exactly what's going to happen. I'm being very careful of spoiling and whatever. But I'm genuinely looking forward to Sin City 2. I think that it's going to be really, really great. Next film. Uh, there's a little film. Well, I don't know how little it is. I just saw the trailer a couple of uh, months ago. It's called Kill the Messenger or something like that. It's starring Jeremy Renner. And it's about a journalist who's taken down like a drug cartel. I don't know a lot about it, but I'm really looking forward to that film. And then there's another a Walk Among the Tombstones, a Walk Among the Gravestones, starring Liam Neeson as a private detective or something. Another film which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and then there's another Tom Hardy film coming out. Uh, another, It seems to be quite small. It seems like it's going to be the place to be on the pines of this year. So maybe that will top the raid too. It's called The Drop. It's about a family man and he commits crimes and it's about the effects of his thing. I just hope that it's not going to take some, too much of the stuff from Place Beyond the Pines tonight. You know, I doubt, I doubt it well. It just looks like it's got that same sort of feeling relationship between the father and his family, 
uh, rather than focusing on his actions in general. I'm genuinely excited for that film. Then there's uh, another film. I don't know if these are coming out in this order or anything. So, uh, The Interview, which is the same guys which did Bad Neighbours. It's got Seth Rogen again uh, and James Franco. And when I first heard about it, this before I saw Bad Neighbours, I was going, yeah, it's going to be another boring comedy. But then I watched Bad Neighbours and I go, you know what, these guys could genuinely make me laugh. And the subject matter is... Dark and controversial as it is, it's about it's about two journalists who are hired by the CIA, I think, um, to assassinate Kim Jong Un, who is still alive at this current time. Um, and so there was some controversial stuff between the Koreans and the American filmmakers. Uh, but it looks it's James Franco and Seth Rogen. It looks like it's going to be funny. I hope that it is. I really hope that they nail it, uh, and I'm looking forward to that one. And then the big one of this year, which if the drop doesn't do it, I feel like this one might. Interstellar. Uh, directed by Christopher Nolan, who did Inception, he did the Dark Knight trilogy, he did Memento. Uh, truly, possibly one of the greatest directors we've got at the moment. Uh, it's starring Matthew McConaughey, it's got Michael Caine, as most of his films do. Uh, Jessica Chastain and Anne Hathaway. Uh, they're all in it, and it's Matthew McConaughey he plays an engineer who has to go to space uh, to seek an alternate fuel resource, and he has to leave his daughters behind. And it's about them. It's more about the relationship between his daughters, is what they're saying, than it is. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be an absolutely huge blockbuster, end of year blockbuster, uh, which is just going to blow everyone's minds. And I hope that it is. I plan. I'm going to university in September, and so I will be at a place with an IMAX cinema. So I'm hoping that that will be on the IMAX and that will be the first film I see in IMAX and I will almost definitely do a review on that. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's about it. I haven't mentioned The Hobbit 3 because I do not, I am not looking forward to that. I have to go and see it because I've seen the other two and so I feel an obligation to finish the trilogy. I'm not looking forward to that. I haven't thought the past two in the series have been that great. Uh, I thought that they were actually rather disappointing. Um, and I don't think number three is... They just, they're they really just dragging this book out for all it's worth. Uh, because that seems to be what Peter Jackson likes to do. And other film which a lot of people see, seem to be looking forward to is The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. I really like the first Hunger Games. I like the second one even better. They're not Battle Royale, but they are very, very good. I love... The first Hunger Games book, and I loved the second Hunger Games book. You know, I don't think either film is quite as good as the book as they never, for, as they hardly ever are. But I think they're very, very. I love those books. Trouble is, Mockingjay is not a good book. Um, I did not like Mockingjay, and so I'm not entirely excited about the film because maybe maybe the film will do something because it was the narration that got lost in the thing in the uh, in the book. So maybe the film would do better at that and actually keep my attention hooked. I would probably go and see it. I might not. I haven't seen either of them in the cinema. Uh, and so I don't know if I'll make this something that will happen. If, my, if a group of friends are going, I'll go with them. Uh, I don't know. Um, I hope that it improves on the book. I really do. But considering that they've got a base of storyline in the book, and it's a storyline which really was the book's weaknesses, uh, as well as her ability to portray that storyline. Uh, that's what weakened it all. That's what didn't make it that great. Um, I hope it's good, but I'm not particularly excited for it. I see the trailers and I go, oh, that looks really good. And then I remember how bad the book is. And that's that. So, uh, that's my half-year mark film talks. Uh, I think that's what I'll probably call it, because it was a whole bunch of stuff. Films that I've missed, films that I've liked and films that I'm looking forward to. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.